Hello and welcome in to the Go and Fun Esports Tournament. We're about to get in to our semifinals for the winner bracket between Event Horizon and Integrity to see who's going to be able to make it to the finals. Yeah, and uh, over on the blue side, it might look like some old friends. Maybe you guys remember, this is formerly known as Edge. Army in the top lane, Blaze, that's Please No Ganks. You guys know all the other names. Recently rebranding, uh, joining this Event Horizon organization that I believe just actually won the MRO Open Overwatch Tournament. So, uh, really uh, stepping up to the plate here is this organization because Edge coming into this tournament were one of the, the favorites to win the whole thing. Yeah, they they still are definitely one of the favorites, being one of the top teams, always performing heavily in any single match we have seen them in. Now, hopefully going to be able to find some competition as we get further into this brackets. But right now, we are getting it through the bands. We have the uh, Thresh and the Ivern band away by Event Horizon, really targeting at Integrity. Waiting for that last one, going to be the Caitlyn. And then on the other side, we have Integrity banning away the Shen and the Talia. Right, and at the moment it looks like Event Horizon just targeting some comfort picks, not really focused on any of the OPs, just really uh, looking at a lot of these different lanes. But then you look over at Integrity's side, and you see Shen and Talia band away, two of these champions with this global ability. And what that reads to me is that Integrity want to try and shut down the map play from Event Horizon. They know this team has been together for a long, long time. They know they are very comfortable using champs that have global abilities. And by banning two of those away, maybe they can hope to keep uh, the game in the laning phase for a little bit longer and not let the game escalate too quickly. That is true. We have seen that Event Horizon, aka Edge, has definitely liked their roaming game, helping everyone get snowballing right away. But we do see the final ban being Lulu and then getting a nice heavy roamer, such as that Ari for Event Horizon. Yeah, I don't know about first picking this Ari necessarily. It feels like there's a lot of other champions on the board right now. But, you know, since we didn't really hit any of those power picks, maybe it just so happens that they're not scared. And Cypher specifically out of the mid lane doesn't care about getting the counter pick because you almost never see a mid laner locked in right away like that. No, nope. yeah, it is very unusual to see that Cypher going to be Having to be careful on that one. Got to make sure that he doesn't get too heavily counter uh, picked in this. As we do see the Nautilus and the Dilution being picked up by Integrity. Yeah, Nautilus out of the top lane. Been one of those stock standards for a really long time. Even after you've seen some other of those more popular popular top laners receive some nerfs. Think Maokai from a few patches ago. Even this patch, Rumble, trying to get taken down just a little bit out of that top lane. But Nautilus has been through it all. He's seen here for he's been here for a long, long time. And uh, there's always the possibility of flexing that picks down to the support role. I doubt we're going to see that picked up by Shadow down there. But uh, absolutely, uh, for the top lane, very, very standard. And you can't read too much into that if you are Event Horizon. No, but it does appear they're reading a little bit into it. Going to be picking themselves up that Poppy for Armia and the Ezreal for Panda. Yeah, Armia's no no uh, no stranger here to the poppy pick out of the top lane. Even after a lot of other top laners have shifted to other picks, such as the Nautilus or maybe even some other carry-oriented tops, Armia's definitely stayed up here uh, with those tanks. And Zanzwa at the same time, I don't think we're going to see too much carry potential coming out of either of these two guys up there. And rather, they're going to look for their solo laners, maybe, maybe even their junglers, because we know uh, both these junglers like to get down and dirty and make the plays happen across the map. Even though they got some new name changes, they still got those same tendencies. Yeah, which actually surprises me. We've seen the junglers really fall through in this uh, pick ban phase. Not really seeing too many bans, the only one being the Ivern, but Graves, Rengar, Constix, at least all the big ones that you usually are used to seeing still haven't been picked up yet. Yeah, and I mean, that's sort of why we're seeing them all uh, wait for so long is because they weren't there weren't any bans. So there's no real priority on trying to grab a really strong one for yourself. But I find it really interesting here that Integrity have actually saved their fifth and final pick for their jungler. And that's because they basically know what they're playing against in the, in the bottom lane. The Ezreal paired up with anything isn't necessarily going to be all that strong. And securing a Karma for themselves means that they are more than likely always going to have that shoving advantage. And 
Now they make sure 100% that they have a fantastic matchup for the jungler so they can try and plan out and win as many of these 2v2s or 3v3s as they can. Yeah, but the Orianna in the mid lane going to be the aim for that counter in the mid lane by the side of Integrity. Not sure if I really agree with that. That is the hardest counter, much more looking for the team fights. But then we get to see the Lee Sin and the Nami being picked up by Event Horizon. Yeah, Lee Sin definitely going to have a lot of gank synergy with these lanes. Uh, top lane, fantastic with the, with the Poppy, mid lane with the Ari as well. And these two can roam out of the mid lane, out of the jungle, and try to make plays happen across the board. Because Orianna isn't a champion that's going to dominate in the lane phase. It's very much a safe, uh, safe mid laner. And paired up with a farming jungler like the Graves, if they do lock that in, means that they're typically going to be on the back foot when it comes to skirmishing around the mid lane. So that is something you have to be careful about when playing against Event Horizon. They love their early game. They love to snowball and try to get the patented 19-minute game that they usually go for. Unless they try to meme it up a little bit and see how long they can drag on a game, even if they have such a dominant lead. Yeah, they... Uh... They haven't gone for many long games yet in the season. It has been quick, it has been clean, and it has been very effective for these guys. But at the same time, Integrity too. They've looked very good. If you're going to make it to the semifinals in the winner's bracket, if you're going to make it to the finals, that means that you basically haven't even lost a game along the way right here. So both of these teams, close in skill level, are going to test each other right here. And it is a best of three. So even if one of these sides do lose game number one, they're going to come back fighting uh, in the pick band to get ready for game number two. At least you'd hope so. But right now we are, are about to get into our three minute delay. So with that, guys, we are going to take a short little break. Going to throw it over to our sponsors. So guys, we'll be back in just a moment. What's going on? We're in the middle of an epic car chase. Is that why you're moving in slow motion? Epic car chases are always done in slow motion. That's a bit cliche. Going for a donut. Donut. <laughs> The moment the juice gently drips down your patty. When your taste buds meet real wholesome meat, that's when you know you're in a point of no return. You realize you're lost in the pleasures only a true meal can offer. You're lost, but you sure as hell don't want to be found. You goes burger bar. Let's burger like never before. Life's about looking for little moments of happiness. Moments when we come out of the cold and into the welcoming warmth. Delicious leisurely mornings or long lazy afternoons where we dream sweet dreams and take the time to finally be ourselves. When you find these little moments of happiness, life becomes irresistible. A journey to be enjoyed. And Costa is there with you, every sip of the way. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to the Going Fun Esports Tournament. We are getting into game number one between Event Horizon and Integrity to find out who is going to be remaining the undefeated team here in the Going Fun Tournament. I'm Alex Magical Voice, joined in by Ender L as we get ready. Exactly. Integrity was another team that was winning very handedly in their matches as well. Event Horizon, we always meme it up that they like to get their 19-minute game, but Integrity was doing similar things in those group stages, so they are definitely a team to keep an eye on. <laughs> Ender, your mic's muted. Oh boy. There we go. We got it fixed. <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? We're gonna just get it fixed and roll right along as we get to see pretty standard starts coming in from both laners. Though we do see blue uh, blue being started by Blaze. Kind of see where his pathing is gonna lead him from there. Yeah, I mean, not, not too uncommon to see that have happened. We also had some changes to the Raptor camp. I'm still not sure. I haven't actually had time to do any new jungle pathings because the patch literally came out for us here on the NA server at 2 a.m. last night. So haven't gotten to test that out too heavily, but it does less damage now, the Raptors do, but they do have more HP. So it might be harder to actually clear those babies early in the game, and that could wind up uh, seeing us not have too many of those uh, Raptor starts anymore for junglers. Yep. Quite unfortunate because you can't give that one Raptor over to your mid laner and give them that little bit of an advantage that you do see some junglers doing. So got to keep an eye on exactly how that will change the meta, how that's going to help out or hurt laners and junglers. Yeah, I was never really a fan of uh, of giving over the, the, one, the one Raptor at the start of the game. As a jungler myself, it just feels way too good to hit level 2 before you actually end up clearing that camp. <laughs> um, but what that does also mean is that you're not going to have those roots where you can either... I, I know there were some players over in the LPL that ran like an EXP quint and went Raptor's red buff into the into the Scuttle Crab, which typically leaves you like one or two minions away from level three. Uh, but with the EXP quint, you can actually hit level three ridiculously quickly and have one of those super early ganks, either in the bottom lane or the top lane, like we were seeing at the beginning of the season where people would start on red, go Krugs, and hit level three. Um, it just takes away some of those more fun openings that you can do. That's a shame because you I love those little cheeky things that some players can try to do change change up how things go get those early ganks in that really do catch off the laners with little to no reaction. Yeah, actually, Cypher just went ahead and shoved out mid lane, went for one of those early recalls that we do see some mid laners like to take. Uh, you typically do this on champions who just want to pick up that second Doran's ring and also just, you know, force your opposing mid laner to recall a lot. It's something you would see a lot in the in the older days when we saw more Victor in the mid lane where you try to force that early recall, make sure that he couldn't get the upgrade on his death ray. But in a game like this too, Ari is one of the champions. Zanzwa though, he just got yeah. solo killed. Wow, that was... I think even you and I were kind of surprised that flash heroic charge Caught Zanzibar off guard now in the bot lane. Blaze gets the flash out of 
Aeon, Bubble gonna connect on Zod, but not gonna be followed up any further. Yeah, well, Zanzwa does need to be careful up here in the top lane. Definitely a mistake that could have been avoided right there for him. But also, he is the, the lowest ranked player on their team. And while I don't think that's going to mean too much as far as, you know, the overall bearings of this game, it means that they want to throw him on the tanks. They aren't necessarily going to look to him to carry out of the top lane. But at the same time, you can't be giving up solo kills in a tank versus tank matchup that people should never really be dying in and, you know, giving army a pretty sizable advantage. Bomby Cinder compared to a Ruby Crystal, mind you, is pretty massive. That. And now we see Blaze again in the bot lane. Zod going to be in a little bit of trouble. Dash it away. The charm comes in from Cypher, but not going to connect onto anything but a minion. So another getting thwarted in the bot lane. Yeah, the bubble not quite connecting there onto Aeon was pretty devastating for the gank overall. Cypher and Toby both ended up using their flashes, which is pretty massive also because Cypher roaming down there, he was trying desperately to get a kill to try and snowball this game even harder. Now he's down about 12 CS in that mid lane after, you know, shoving it out, getting the recall. Now that roam that he lost basically an entire wave underneath that turret for. So got to figure out how you're going to make sure to keep even with the likes of Shadow, who's just looking for the scaling up, looking for the team fights, wants to get that Wombo combo with that Nautilus. So not going to see the biggest of snowballs going in favor of Event Horizon just yet. I mean, it really was just the kill in the top lane and ultimately not going to end up meaning too much. A Poppy won't necessarily be able to abuse her lead all too much, except that Armia <laughs> apparently can. Because why Armia not? Armia is disagreeing with you heavily on that one. Just going, I mean, if, if he gets rooted under the turret or if he gets hit by a dredge line, like, he's going to take a ton of damage and it's probably not worth, but Zanzwa wasn't reacting fast enough because who expects a, expects a Poppy to actually do that? Yeah, and do it again. <laughs> See, Find that's why you, you don't do up. that play. That's why yeah, you don't do it, God. because he's barely, like, living there. Silly, Armia. See, it was the fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. Our, Zanjua didn't fall for it the second time. He was just like, wait a minute. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. And, and also, there was uh, a minion in front of Armia the first time he went for that play. That time, there wasn't. There was only the, the ranged ones, which means that when he charges forward, he's going to be in front of them, so the dredge line is going to be a lot easier to land. We're not going to see Armia do that anymore. He's he's over it. He's over it. Yeah. He, he, got, he got his little bit of fun in there. Got it out of the way. Hopefully, we'll just see him try to style on Zentawal actually in the lane and not under the tower. Going to be incredibly difficult to do so now that Zanzo's actually reached that level 6 mark. Is going to be able to build easily into, uh, excuse me, into his Sunfire Cape, uh, quite simply, uh, from, from now on forward. It's it's no longer going to be that squishy squishy Nautilus once he returns to lane. Yeah. Now we take a look at the bot lane, get to see a little bit of the action going on. We see Zod already pathing to get that really quick Blade of the Ruin King as is the usual, but we do get to see a, the call co coming out of Panda. He's just trying to scale up a little bit more, trying to get a little bit more of a farming game going up as opposed to really trying to go for that poke. And that's one of the more favorable recalls for an Ezreal. Of course, you're never going to be able to out-damage the solution in a trade, especially now that he has his Bilgewater Cutlass, but either recalling for your tier uh, of the Goddess Plessicle, Fantastic, that or Sheen would probably be the uh, the number one op opportunity. Yeah, but we gotta see a flash in the mid lane. Shadow was very much keen to seeing exactly what Cypher did. That Spirit Rush not connecting with the charm, so he's gonna be safe. Right, and because Army has had priority this entire top lane uh, for the first eight and a half minutes of this game, he can easily shove and then roam into the mid. And that was one of my concerns initially for Integrity, was that in the solo lanes, they didn't really have the advantage, at least early on. So Army is easily able to shove, especially after getting that solo kill. Cypher too, uh, even though we haven't really seen him do much of anything, he has been able to try and go for a lot of those plays. Now Blaze. And Blaze taking a tower shot as well. Whew, gotta, gotta be careful. These these members of Event Horizon getting a little bit too greedy and taking a little bit too much damage. Yeah, and to, speaking of which, Panda just jumped straight on forward, because why not? Yeah. But they got the bubble onto Zod, which is definitely nice. Not going to actually be able to find the kill that they would like to on that Lucian or onto that Karma, at least for now. Yeah, I mean... 
Uh, Nami Ezreal is definitely not built to, uh, to win out in the landing phase. It's much more about sustaining and scaling on a little bit more, but Zanswood does need to be a little bit careful underneath this turret. Armia will go for it. Yeah, his depth charge is gonna come in. He's gone for the hammer shock, picks up the kill. Armia gets his second solo kill of the game. Yeah, well, there you go, and Armia, because he knows Van Cleef is on the bottom half of the map, spot out that ward right next to the wolves that actually saw Van Cleef go over there. It's absolutely fantastic for him. He can afford to go for aggressive plays like that. He knows Shadow was pinned in the mid lane, was simply going to be recalling there, and not only is he 2-0 in this matchup now, that is 26 CS and ultimately about a 1,200 gold lead for him. Yeah, we can even see that if we do get a look at the gold with the items being put, purchased up. Actually not going to finish that Sunfire Kite and instead going to go for more of that MR, trying to scale up and get himself that early spirit message. Yeah, well, oh, Van Cleef in trouble. Yeah, here comes the charm. Not connecting, but Blaze still there to pick up the kill. Toby might fall, had to flash away from the calling coming in from Zod. He survives. So still getting that kill onto the side of Event Horizon. Could mean this infernal being in their hands with Shadow. That's a TP behind him. Shadow. TP coming in, but he is cut off. He gets slammed into the wall. Panda picking up the kill. Right, it's just Event Horizon turning up the heat right now. And there's only three members from Integrity in the area. Zanzwa's teleport not going to amount to much here, and he just comes in way too late. The dragon was already easily going to be secured by Event Horizon. You don't have enough damage. Zod didn't have the mana to actually go for a play like that, and Event Horizon used their advantage to make plays happen, and really succeeding in that. Especially using Army, because... Zenzua, poor Zenzua. Even if he got TP'd a little bit earlier, probably wouldn't have really amounted to anything. He doesn't really bring as much to the, to the fight as we have seen Armia being able to do thus far. And Shadow getting caught out as well from that TP really was the undoing of the play that already was in favor of Event Horizon. Probably would have just better, been better for Zanzwa to walk straight back up to the top lane to try and get back at least a little bit here in CS, but by matching and not getting anything for it, not only does he uh, fall behind a little bit, but he lost the CS there in the top lane too, so Army wasn't even punished in that department. And the fact that Van Cleef is now playing around this top lane is really unfortunate here for Integrity, even if they get a kill. Yeah. That is going to be the heroic charge from Army. I got to be careful because Van Cleef is on the chase. Blast gun to safety. Yeah, well, Van look Cleef at the look at the bottom lane now. You you lose complete priority by showing in the top lane. Even if you get the kill, like I said, that means nothing for this matchup. Zanzwa isn't all of a sudden magically going to be able to win it away. The blue buff is stolen away from Shadow. That's number one thing that you do lose. Now they're getting engaged upon, potentially. And Van Cleef by himself. They're just going to see if they can get this kill over to Cypher. He has the Heroic Charge <laughs> coming in from Armia to steal it away. Yeah, I mean, Armia set that completely up here. Blaze! Oh, what a great dodge of that Shockwave! Cypher going to be able to get the kill with a great charm from that Dragon's Rage combo. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a nice play, don't get me wrong. He was not intentionally trying to dodge away from the Shockwave. It was just one of those things that happened to happen because he was going for the in second. Shadow wasn't able to recognize that soon enough, didn't realize that that was a play that Blaze would be willing to go for, and this game is quickly unraveling for integrity here as they find themselves majorly behind in gold, and now losing the 2v2 down bot. Yeah, we have the tidal wave coming in on to the likes of Aeon. Panda gonna go in for the exhaust onto Zod, gonna give the double kill over to Panda. This should never happen. Zod has the one item power spike. The blade of the rune keep is fantastic in these small skirmishes. And what does Panda have? A sheen, a pickaxe, a tear of the goddess. He literally just went to a thrift store and bought everything he could find for himself. He even has the coal too, but it's the help of the blue buff. It's Toby. It's the early kill they had as well that's allowing them to win out in this lane. And it's so nice too because Blaze doesn't help have to help them out anymore. Now that they're proving that this scaling lane can actually win the two versus two down bottom he's allowed to go for the crazy plays in the mid lane focusing down onto shadow and now van cleef too is just so hard pressed to help out every single lane on the map and he just can't do that on this graves pick now graves is meant to farm up and wait until the late game not go for these early aggressive plays that is a leash sin's job and honestly blaze has had an easy time because 
Think about all the, how the lanes have been doing anyways without him. He oh. doesn't have to worry about top lane. Army is doing great. And now, look at this. They're just able to put the pressure <laughs> oh, on the bottom lane. Uh, he is left to dry. Not much he can do. Blaze going to go in really aggressive onto Van Cleef. Got to be careful. Shadow's coming around. Zod going to be able to pick up the shutdown onto him. The background we did, did see it. <laughs> the kill onto Van Cleef. Army. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're just trying to they're just trying to loop down onto these two right now because they have to get underneath their turret. And even if they do get over here, there's potential to go for a dive, and that's exactly what Armia wants to go for. But the rest of his team backed away. Yeah. So, despite the fact that you're able to dive a Nautilus early on, doesn't mean you're going to be able to do that now. Yeah, Sanso does have the teleport as well, too. So now that he's been given a little bit more time, Army has actually been fairly chunked out. It's going to be really hard to pull this off. Yeah, so i going to back off for now and just try to get a reset. Though Zanzawa in that top lane has had a lot of alone time, catching up pretty massively in the CS. He was down about 40 CS, but now catching yep. up. But the mid lane tower falling is a little bit more important. Yeah, the first tower of the game going down, still in favor of, of Event Horizon. And I don't know, I think Blaze can almost win this one versus one, but he's got to land those skill shots right there. Uh, the all, all the damage of Lee Sin in this early game is pretty much built into the ult Q combo right there. And if you don't land the Q, you're probably not going to be able to take him down. Not at all. <laughs> As we get to see a little bit of a push coming in from the side of Event Horizon spot lane. Should be able to take this tower in a few minion waves. Have that nice pressure going for themselves. Yeah, just need to bring down the whole crew. Go for the <laughs> the big play around the bottom lane like we've been seeing Event Horizon do time and time again down here in the bottom lane. And with the uh, next Drake of the game, the Ocean Drake spawning up in around 40 seconds, you got to believe that that's going to be the play on Event Horizon's mind. They've got Armia's Teleport, and even though I'm sure he would love to pick up that top lane turret, if the team calls for it, he will respond because that's what Event Horizon just love to do. And you can see just one ward spotting out Shadow and they go in. Yeah, Tidal Wave cutting him off the exhaust onto Shadow, trying to get that insect from Blaze. Not going to be able to connect that, but the teleport from Armia flashing over the wall. Wants to hit up Zod onto the wall. They're going to lock him down. Blaze picks up the kill. The flash coming in from Aeon to dodge oh, away. Oh, he's stuck! He's minion blocked. Oh, he got no. Flash in the minion, so he couldn't escape. That is so tragic, and Armia, he's just showing no respect this entire game, but they can do that because there's no damage left for Integrity. They're just running him down in the jungle. Sandra going to lock down Armia, use the depth charge on it to blaze. Shockwave dodged away with the charm, hitting onto Van Cleef. The ignite has been put on the graves. Collateral damage not going to be enough to pick up the damage. Shadow's going to be finished <laughs> off with the Dragon's Rage. Zenzawa being the last one from the fight. Charmed up, hit the wall, killed by Armia. This is just Event Horizon styling once again. That wasn't even an insect from Blaze. He was trying to make the, the ward hop kick, but it ended up just executing Shadow right there because he got so much damage at this point in the game. And this is absurd. Aeon just walks back in and gets immediately bubbled up because Event Horizon have complete dominance over this entire map. They look like they're doing to integrity right now what they were doing all throughout the group stage is absolutely rolling over their opposition and integrity. They have to figure out some way to bounce back from this because this is a heartbreaker. You gotta really imagine, is there a team out there that can stop this powerhouse that is Event Horizon? 18 minutes into the game, 7k gold lead already in their favor. This is absolutely brutal, Ender. Yeah, honestly, bouncing back in this game, probably not going to happen because you see a 7,000 gold lead at 18 minutes, that's a lot. Then you have to keep in mind that Event Horizon literally only have two towers. There is so much standing gold on this map that the second they rotate everyone up here into the top lane, secure themselves a couple of other turrets, heck, maybe they even grab themselves the Rift Herald because that's just an objective, a free one on the map that they can take at this point. They should be able to easily close out this game and it feels like for integrity, you know, for now they can try to fight back, but it very well could reach a point where they have to just, you know, move on to the next game, figure out what they need to change up, whether it's drafting some more priority solo laners or just figuring out how to not fall so drastically behind. Yeah, Zen like Zenzawa has been pretty much all game. He's just getting absolutely bullied in the top lane. He's going to try to survive as long as he can, but not really going to do much. And all it does is get the double kill onto Shadow for Panda.
Yeah, kind of knowing to cut your losses right there by Shadow. It's still a nice play by Integrity to keep going here in the mid lane, but at the same time, you're losing a tier two in the bottom lane, the tier one in the top lane, and that differential is going to be fairly massive, especially because Zod and Van Cleef just canceled their recalls. It's only a support karma to try and hold on to this base, and you will not outshove this Event Horizon lineup. Yeah, looks like they're gonna go for the base race. Integrity kind of just thinking the same way we have been, but this game might be a little bit over. They're just gonna go for the hard push. To see what I they mean, can you gotta get. commit now. Like, why, why are you recalling Zod? You already decided to go for this. You might as well at least try to trade inhib for inhib, even though it's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, as we do see Sensual going in pretty hard, as well as Army of the Tower goes down for the inhibitor. With Armio going really far, trying to see if he can lock down Shadow. That's the flash in the kick from Blaze, gonna get the kill. Zenjual will be the next one for the double onto that Lee Sin. Then Hibiter is gonna be the next target. Van Cleef as well, having to run away from Cypher. Him and Zod cannot fight that Ari 2v1. That is that is gonna be the game. Yeah, it's literally uh, just Cypher canceling out the recalls right here. They had to run all the way from that mid lane inhibitor tower into their base, underneath their nexus. That's how far Cypher was willing to chase them down the map. And I would like to say that Blaze's Lee Sin is absolutely sick, except for when he misses his sonic wave onto the Raptors. That was a little bit of a letdown right there, but still. What else can you want from these guys? Edge have looked so incredibly dominant throughout the, you know, the, the, the group stages, and now they're just doing work, getting things done here, looking like they are, are just on another level than any other team in this tournament. Not much more that can be said on that matter because it's that's the case. As we get a look at how things are going to play out for the rest of this game, we just see that Event Horizon, they're going to play a little bit safer. Go for that cleaner win and then if you're the side of integrity you got to be already thinking about game two how you're going to bounce back what you're going to do in order to change things up and really win the game you mentioned it earlier just trying to maybe get more lane priority matchups for your team but even then we've just seen how dominant the side of event horizon truly are Ooh, charm landing onto shadow with the shockwave not completing going to be the final kill and just event horizon pretty much showing their dominance in the map. I mean, there's just no reason for Integrity to be up that far. Like, what are you actually on the map for? Sit underneath those turrets, camp right there, because there's nothing else to do. But can you even camp under your own tower as they're diving in the inhibitor tower in the mid lane without <laughs> inhibitor Not when three of your teammates fun. die for no reason, Magic. <laughs> That's very true. Very true. But like we have mentioned time and time again, the game is just Slowly getting to that end of the grind coming in with the inhibitors falling all over the map. Inhibitor tower in the bot lane as well. 22 minutes into this yeah. game. About to take all three inhibitors. Hey, I mean, that's slow for Edge or Event Horizon, whatever you want to call them. But still, man, this is absolutely gross. They can go back, steal away all the buffs, all the camps. It's just... It's clockwork for these guys. They have done this before, and honestly, I want to know what happens if, if this lineup falls behind in the early game. Like, do they even know how to play from behind, or even play when the gold is even? Because all we've seen is win early game, snowball ridiculously quickly, and close before the 25 minute mark. That's literally the only game style that we've seen out of Event Horizon. And even though it, it, it speaks well to that they're a fantastic team, and that they're, they're just that good, at the same time, it's like, these guys have never actually been challenged, so when they do, they might not even know what to do with it. Yeah, I agree. I would love to see that. Just see them have a full challenge where they fall behind, or maybe if they just stay even, where they aren't able to get this massive snowball, have Armia get solo kills in the top lane, and allow Blaze to just go bot lane whenever he pleases. It would be very fascinating to see how Event Horizon can truly play around a disadvantage. Does Van Cleef get it? I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. Not, not with the Ari pretty much zoning him away with the charm. Charm not gonna actually connect, but he's gonna go down anyways. They Literally just, just getting there. autoed to death. It, it, there's yeah. not a whole lot you can do. Hey, we can talk about a nerf to Graves. I, it, it's really not that big of a nerf, um, except in that skirmish right there, because the True Grit no longer gives him the uh, bonus magic resistance that he uh, he had before. The my issue is that is that it doesn't cut down his clear, which is his. Most powerful point. This is this yeah. is gross. <laughs> yeah. There's oh, much, Panda. There's not much to say about that. It's Panda just getting another kill. Seven zero seven. 
Uh, not, not a, not literally, the minions yet. are going to end this game. They don't even have to get any more kills because the Baron Up Super Creeps, yeah. This is the uh, the Event Horizon BM we know and love. Look at this. This is, this is like a Zerg versus Protoss here. This is not even fair. Yeah, there's there's nothing going to happen here. It's it's game. Yeah, Event Horizon just <laughs> Look at that. maybe patting their KDA a little bit. <laughs> They're literally but... playing StarCraft. <laughs> Letting their, <laughs> their creeps yeah. do the work. As we finish the game, game number one decisively going over to Event Horizon with the Nexus falling. We gotta wonder exactly how Integrity come back into game two and if they truly even can, because that was just quite the stomp coming in from this team that we have favorited throughout the entirety of this tournament. But with that, guys, we will be taking a short little break, throwing it over to some music. So, guys, stay tuned. What's going on? We're in the middle of an epic car chase. Is that why you're moving in slow motion? Epic car chases are always done in slow motion. That's a bit cliche. Going for a donut. Donut. <laughs> The moment the juice gently drips down your patty. When your taste buds meet real wholesome meat, that's when you know you're in a point of no return. You realize you're lost in the pleasures only a true meal can offer. You're lost, but you sure as hell don't want to be found. You goes burger bar. Let's burger like never before. Life's about looking for little moments of happiness. Moments when we come out of the cold and into the welcoming warmth. Delicious leisurely mornings or long lazy afternoons where we dream sweet dreams and take the time to finally be ourselves. When you find these little moments of happiness, life becomes irresistible. A journey to be enjoyed. And Costa is there with you, every sip of the way.
Buenos dias and welcome back into the going fun esports champion for game number two between the Event Horizon squad and between Integrity to find out if Event Horizon are going to be able to just completely shut down Integrity or if Integrity is going to be able to fight back as we have the first two bands, the Shen and the uh, Avern. You know, you say, uh, you say if, I hate to say it, but uh, it feels almost like an inevitability at this point, that Event Horizon are just one of the best, if not the best team here in the tournament. And Integrity, uh, it kind of kind of sucks they have to play them here in the semifinals right here. Of course, it is a double, double elimination bracket, so there is potential for whoever loses, say, to fight back through the loser side of things and get into the actual finals all around. But it is interesting. No draft changes so far, Magic. I mean, if you're on the side of Event Horizon, you don't need to change anything. But if you're on the side of Integrity, you really need to figure out how you're going to change things up and really flip the script in order to come back. Yeah, Shen Talia again banning away those globals. Our Integrity, they clearly do not want to deal with those, even though <clears throat> last game it didn't even feel like... Uh, didn't even feel like Event Horizon needed globals at all because they just shoved their lanes and roamed. They played the map, they won their individual lanes, and Integrity need to find some sort of kink in the armor they can take a crack at to try and find some way to pull an early game lead because that's what we said they needed to do. That's the only thing we haven't seen Event Horizon win with is when they fall behind early because they never fall behind early. and. Uh, they really don't. That is definitely a problem going into this. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out exactly what went wrong, get back into the big ban right away. But yeah, it's something that has to be worked on by just a lot of squads. It's not getting down so early on at 2 Event Horizon. You need to be able to either stay even or find a way to just fight back at them in the early game and actually somewhat win lane. Yeah, and I think last game, if we try and track what went wrong for Integrity, it started off with Armia getting like two t uh, two solo kills up in the top lane against Zanswa. That just really shouldn't happen, and Zanswa needs to be able to rein it in a little bit, not quite get picked off like that. When you're playing something like the Nautilus, that is almost impossible to die solo with in lane. And then uh, where the game really started to open up was uh, when we saw actually Van Cleef try and assist Zanswa. A little bit up in the top lane where then all of a sudden the three-man unit of blaze and his bottom lane were able to just completely take control of that bot side jungle steal away the blue buff from shadow so he could no longer clear away waves in the mid lane and then they just dove bottom lane over and over and over again until uh all of a sudden this ezreal nami dual lane was beating illusion karma which just shouldn't really ever happen no not at all and th that is the sad truth it's just Event Horizon, they know how to play the map so well. They know how to put the wards down. They know how to get the vision that they need to in order to just keep up that snowball, keep up that pressure consistently. And it looks like we will have a change in the band. It's going to be that Lee Sin. 
I don't blame him. Blaze's Lee Sin was dirty last game. The changeup was from the Lulu that they banned away previously when they were on red side. So I'd assume that they go ahead and lock in that support for themselves right here because it is the number one pick on this patch. And if they don't take it for themselves, all of a sudden you're giving a very strong pickup both defensively late game and offensively in the early game for uh, Toby in the bot lane. Plus it does allow the side of integrity to not show too much early on so that they can have that potential to get a counter pick in a lane or two make it so that they don't have these automatically losing lanes like you were kind of telling telling them that they really need to make sure they that they don't draft right and they are definitely taking their time with this one right here wow they steal away the ari from Cypher. I would have never expected to see this first picked once. Last game it was a surprise. This game, when it's actually for Shadow, even larger of one, and that uh, leaves up quite a bit. Yeah, and the Lulu Lucian lane being picked up for Panda and Toby for Event Horizon. You had to you had to see that coming. Yeah, the Lulucian, as I like to call it right there. I think I think I stole that from someone, but I'm, I'm going to run with it because Lulucian just at, sounds pretty sick right there. And uh, yeah, Panda Toby were able to best Aeon and uh, Zod in the two versus two with a Ezreal Nami last time around. You better be uh, pretty frightened if you're the duo here from Integrity because... They've, uh, they've got quite the duo right there with the Lucian Lulu. Going to be able to shove in the wave early. Going to be able to trade very effectively uh, early game post uh, Blade of the Ruin King 2. It just is really, really, really powerful, this Lucian pick. Yeah, also make sure to change uh, scenes so that we can see the pick ban. Already changed, man. Perfect. Just want to make sure. But yeah, the, honestly, if you were the side of integrity, I would have liked them to not see that them do that kind of pick, but they go for a Nautilus and Graves instead. Right, the uh, the Graves once more here for Van Cleef, and you know I'm sometimes a fan of the Graves, I'm sometimes not quite a fan of the Graves. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys know what Graves needs to succeed as a jungler myself. You need your lanes to have priority, uh, the majority of them. So you want like one side of your map plus your mid lane to be favorable. Locking in the RE first meant that you're more than likely going to have a solid matchup out of the mid unless Cypher locks in something like the Cassiopeia that could potentially trade hard back against him early game, um, you know. But he's, he's going to want to figure out some way to get a strong 2v2 out of the bottom lane. So I'd expect to see them lock in something like the Caitlyn to try and outrange the Lucian, try and lock in maybe a Karma 2 to get that shove going because Graves isn't good at ganking early on necessarily, but he's fantastic at invading into the enemy jungle. He has super high base damages, he has a very healthy clear, and if his lanes can rotate and assist him quickly, you can absolutely put a ton of pressure onto whoever you're facing off against in that jungle. Yeah. Well, we still have yet to see who we're going to have uh, Van Cleef go up against in the jungle, as we have Zillion and Poppy picked up for the side of Event Horizon, gonna give Army out that Poppy once again. Well, this is just let Panda carry the game right here. Everyone's gonna be buffing up his Lucian, and this is sort of the composition that I like to see uh, revolving around the Lucian pick because Lucian, I think, can absolutely struggle very hard in team fights later on because his range is so short. But you give him a massive shield, you 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 know increase all his stats with the Lulu, and then you revive him, even if he does die. So Panda can be an absolute madman in this game. Dive in, pretend he's just, you know, trying to 1v9 the game, because in reality, he is the sole source of damage right now, at least, for this EVH lineup. Mm -hmm. Gotta have very pittance damage coming in from that Zillion. I ain't sure he can put the popcorn on people, but not necessarily going to be the most impactful, as we get to see the last... Uh, picks coming in for the side of integrity gonna be that nami and that sivir the sivir is an interesting one right here because i think against a blade of the ruined king lucian especially once that item gets completed it's gonna be hard times ahead uh for zod but he does have the spell shield to try and uh, block out some of the poke coming in for lucian potentially and he can also try and shove in the wave early on that's key Again, for this Graves pick, you want to have those shoving lanes, and right now it looks like Integrity have drafted 
uh, just that late game. The damage is going to be comparable uh, to that of a Caitlyn, but again, my concern would be that you are going to be short-ranged, and now that we actually see the Jarvan lock in for Blaze on the other side, Spell Shield isn't going to be effective against that. Zod will have to flash out of the Cataclysm if he does get caught up, and there's also that synergy between the Poppy J4 to try and just continue to lock you down in the pit using the artificial wall that Blaze is going to be able to bring to the table. The, we, I would like to see exactly what kind of build path Blaze opts to go for with this Jarvan. We saw in the uh, 7.5, uh, 7.5, 7.7. 7 7. <laughs> yeah, 7.7, yeah, same thing. But we saw in that patch that actually Jarvan got a little bit of a buff to his health ratio. Yeah, it was uh, stronger in the early game, and typically on Jarvan, you would max Q into E, uh, so it is going to be nice. The base shield increasing about 15 at rank 1, which his Golden Age is going to be sitting on for the majority of the game. But then also, instead of the bonus shield that he is granted uh, being just a flat number based on the a number of enemy champions hit, now it scales off of his maximum HP from 2 to 4% on your levels, and that's per enemy champion that you hit again so that can be very very large especially if we do see blaze go for more hp oriented build path although i don't think that's necessarily going to be what he is running this game because he's pretty much the second type of the, on the only second source of damage coming in from this event horizon lineup and uh blaze last game he was trying to carry too yeah almost akin to something like a uh, protect the Kogma, like a Juggerma comp, but this time with Lucian. So we'll see how that's going to play out as we are about to get into the game, but we're going to throw it over for a quick message from our sponsors. going on we're in the middle of an epic car chase is that why you're moving in slow motion epic car chases are always done in slow motion that's a bit cliche going for a donut donut <laughs> The moment the juice gently drips down your panty. When your taste buds meet real wholesome meat, that's when you know you're in a point of no return. You realize you're lost in the pleasures only a true meal can offer. You're lost, but you sure as hell don't want to be found. Hugo's Burger Bar. Let's burger like never before. Life's about looking for little moments of happiness. Moments when we come out of the cold and into the welcoming warmth. Delicious leisurely mornings or long lazy afternoons where we dream sweet dreams and take the time to finally be ourselves. When you find these little moments of happiness, life becomes irresistible. A journey to be enjoyed. And Costa is there with you, every sip of the way.
Welcome back to game number two between Event Horizon and between Integrity at the Go and Fun Esports Championships to find out who's going to make it to the finals or who is going to have to make it to a game three if Event Horizon do manage to lose this one. But we're going to find out as we load up onto the rift. Event Horizon looked so incredibly dominant back in game number one that it's hard to imagine a world in which they don't actually make it to the finals. But they are, you know, trying out some some more interesting champions. I, I don't think we've seen too much Zelene out of the mid lane in a little bit of time. Although it's definitely geared around keeping Panda and Blaze alive in these team fights. And then, you know, the new-ish Jarvan with a couple of those changes primarily to the W, uh, leaves us wondering whether or not he's going to go for a more HP-oriented build, or if it's still going to be the Blaze show out of the jungle trying to carry uh, twice as hard as he did on Lee Sin last game. And the question here is, even if he does opt for that more AD-centric build, that brings a lot more, a lot of that AD sort of focus damage from the entirety of their team. They ha already have Panda, then they'd have Blaze as well. Sure, Cypher and Toby do a little bit of AP damage, but you could pretty much path towards uh, really resisting them with a lot of armor if you're on the side of integrity. It's true, and looks like... No, Van Cleef not going to actually start on the Raptors right there. I was wondering, because I would have actually really liked to see that, so we could uh, test out and see exactly how the, the Raptor start does work now on 7 point on 7.7, .7. but, you know, you, you were saying, yes, there's a lot of physical damage coming through. Blaze, Panda, of course, going to be building a lot of AD, and Cypher isn't really going to be able to do all too much if this game makes it towards the later stages, because he only has one damaging ability, mind you. Exactly. Gonna, gonna be very difficult for him to truly keep putting out the DPS, as, at least if he misses any bombs, because, like you mentioned, only damaging ability does happen to have but now we get to see how the rift is going to be playing as we get to see it just pretty much a standard starts a little bit of a good push coming in from the bot lane though from event horizon it's to be expected the lucian lulu here in this early game especially because they entered lane a little bit earlier but look at this van cleef in the jungle so we do see some skirmishing in the jungle from blaze and van cleef gotta Actually got to see Van Cleef going a little bit hard on that Jarvan pick, which kind of surprises me. Yeah, he was trying to scout out Blaze somewhere. They knew that Blaze actually started on the top half of the map because Armia entered lane a little bit late right there. It just didn't quite have the damage to actually kill this Jarvan, but this is what we expected out of the Graves. He can play aggressive in the early game. It's just in the very, very early game, it's very hard to call a lot of these jungle fights because if you jump over the wall and you're opposing jungler is there and not all too low all of a sudden things aren't going to go too well for you because you already you already used your escape to get over the wall in the first place and that's pretty much what we saw with him going right there but now we see blaze he's hanging around that mid lane he wants to go onto that ari yeah he's got the the flag drag combo and he's looping around for it now yeah they got the charm onto cypher they came the exhaust onto shadow but he has no mana flag and drag and go. a lock down shadow red buff slowing him down first blood for blaze Oh, bot lane, Zod in yeah. so much trouble. But the flash came in from Panda, not going to be able to pick up that kill. Good exhaust being used by Aeon to keep him alive. Yeah, pretty massive, too, to force the recall out of the duo here from Integrity down bottom lane. Got three summoner spells for their troubles at the same, same time. And Panda still has the heal, so if there is a trade, you know, in the future once they do wind up returning towards that lane. It is going to go incredibly well for Panda and Toby, especially because their recall is going to massively favor that of the one Zod just got. I expect Panda to be able to pick up two longswords for his trouble, and that's a little bit of extra AD compared to that of what Zod was able to pick up. I swear you are a fortune seer, my good sir, because that is exactly what Panda ended up doing. I mean, literally the exact items you said, but one lane I want to focus on is actually going into this top lane as we see Van Cleef hanging around looking for that gank onto Armia. Armia not yeah. quite styling over Sanjua like he did last game, even though it's the same matchup. Yeah, he's getting shoved in early and that's Van Cleef, but Armia has it! <laughs> he gets the kill before Van oh Cleef is able to even rotate in. That is just Armia in a nutshell. No, see, that's the caster's curse in a nutshell because you literally just said the matchup wasn't going the same way for Armia. 
I remember around the five minute mark last game where the Poppy also solo killed the Nautilus. The only difference was that this time Zanzwa actually had the shove advantage early on, but literally the same exact items that Zanzwa recalled to pick up after his first death. And, you know, if we're just going with this whole, uh, you know, palm reading strat that we've been doing, we expect Armia to recall and pick himself up. Guess what? The Bomby Cinder. Oh, we canceled it. There you go. Yeah, he, he wants more. <laughs> yeah, he, he wants more. More at well, 11. I think he got the Bomby Cinder and the Null Magic Mantle. Uh, I first to recall it. just had the Bombies. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about the the order of items he picked up. Yeah, he, he went Bombie Cinder and then started to get his Spectre's Cow because you, of course, want the Magic Resistance against the matchup into the Nautilus. But early Bombies Cinder damage can't really uh, compare. Yeah, but look at this roam coming in from Cypher. They got the flash out of Aeon. Teleport coming in from Zenjua. They want to lock down that Zillion, getting the heal out of Panda to keep him alive so he can get hit by that dredge line. That is pretty tragic, too. I would have actually liked to see Zenjua, once he committed to the TP, which I don't think he should have in the first place, try to flash onto Panda, because Panda lost his flash in that early exchange between the two duos down here in the bottom lane, and maybe that was just him not wanting to risk it. Maybe that, there just wasn't the communication necessary there. Panda goes yeah, in. taking a lot of damage. He's gonna fall. That is the kill picked up by Panda with I Aeon left out to dry. Glitter lines to slow. Double kill for Panda. Easy, easy, easy right there for the Panda Toby duo right there. Potentially our best to do two versus two down there in the tournament. Panda is a master tier solo queue player. Toby too at the higher end of Diamond, just like a lot of these other Event Horizon players. And Integrity aren't really pushovers either. They're all diamond players minus Zanzwa up here in the top lane, but they just look outclassed across the board. That's what happens when you have a squad like the Event Horizon squad, who have been around together for quite some time. <coughs> They've played quite a number of games with each other and quite a number of tournaments, so they have that coordination that you want in one of these competitive teams. I mean, you can't really ask for more for these guys. They uh, came into the AOC Multi Cyber Series. Last uh, last year, at the end of last year, absolutely dominating. They're going once more. Yeah, they're looking for Zod. Flash, flag, and drag on to Zod. Gonna lock him down. Toby gonna pick himself up that kill. And things are snowballing a little bit quicker than they did last game. Uh, I think it's fairly close. <laughs> I don't know if you can say it's quicker or it's slower, but I mean, certainly uh, Blaze staying with that, you know, hard carry Jarvan right here. And they're trying to shut down Cypher. Yeah, Cypher is caught out a little bit too far, has the ultimate available, so he's going to get that pop with the teleport coming in, he revives, not going to get hit by the bubble, gets the exhaust on the Van Cleef, the collateral damage, not going to pick up the kill on the Van Cleef, Van Cleef Holy trying moly. to flash in aggressively, but not going to be able to connect that damage that he wants to on a Cypher, meaning that the bot lane is going to fall for first tower to Event Horizon. <laughs> nice one, Blaze, <laughs> right there. Beautiful. He's keeping it He's keeping it jovial down there in the bottom lane, but it's just such a massive difference because you see the three-man commit from Event Horizon. They get a till they kill. They get the first tower of the game at eight minutes. Integrity, they tried to do that in the mid lane. You're doing it against a Zillion who revives army. I had the TP. Zanzo wasn't able to match or even cancel that one out, so he was able to live, and at the end of it, Van Cleef, Shadow, none of them had any mana left in the tank to try and uh, finalize the kill on the Cypher right there, and it's just another one of those feels bad moments for Integrity because they just can't make things work for themselves. Oh, but we will have a little bit of a pause as- Play with the handicap! Again. Unpause yeah. that! <laughs> Unpause that! Give the poor people at Integrity a little bit of Integrity in going into this matchup, and Say, hey, we understand that we're that's, winning that's in that That's not the line. definition of integrity. You're right, it's not. <laughs> it can be, oh, though. Boy. I can spin it. Hold on, hold on. Let me spin it. Okay, okay. You, you, ta you, you take your talking. time with that one. You start you, talking. I, I, I start talking. Okay. Well, um, eight minutes, 50 seconds. I don't know what else to say. It, again, it. is All looking right. really good. Oh, go for it. Okay, so they need their integrity and in looking good in the matchup because you're making them look like fools in how they're playing. Still See, integrity don't can, think no, no, that it has a, it has a second meaning. Uh -huh. There's two meanings to it. Because integrity means something like you're like almost like that of honor, but it's a little bit more like yeah, but you're not using it correctly. 
Because, like, you can talk about the I structural I integrity of a starship magic, but yes. you can't talk about, like... You can talk you can't about just the integrity say... of a person, an, an organization. Uh, you can, yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, I think that's a tough I'm stretching one to it. I'm stretching it, but I said I'm going to make it work. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can I can hold on to that because if you're talking about a person, it's about like honesty and you know your morals and all that good stuff. Well, you could have integrity as a, like a human being. Like, are you together? You know, like is your health doing well? I don't think mental you can health really do that. Mental integrity. Anyways, we're uh, I think we we <laughs> stretch that as long as we can for this. You pause. sure you went to college? <laughs> I also know other languages, so I have that over you. <laughs> so you, so you know do French. I. There you go. Yeah, you know I French, can speak French. French. I can speak German. I can speak Japanese. Okay. Je there's an... <laughs> See, that's what we should do. One day we should just have a cast where you speak French and I speak German. Neither oh, of us God. know what the other thing. Le gank. Le gank. Der Ganken. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy, this has derailed, but honestly, what else is there to talk about? Because Event Horizon, they, uh, dominate. <laughs> they dominate. Alright, well, it looks like we are about to get into the game, so instead of having to listen to this cringe for any longer, hopefully we'll be able to watch some League of Legends plays. I mean, Toby reconnected in theory, but we still don't have the resume yet. It's there it is. Truly tragic. Uh -huh. We Cast didn't even occurs. get the countdown. What's up with that? That was weird. That was very weird. No countdown at all. Just went straight. Spectator into the game. client just hates us. It just, it's it gone does. downhill ever since like seven point three. Yeah, They're like we get these momentary pauses in the thing where it's not even based off your ping. It just randomly happens, and Shadow gets taken half health by a little. Oh, poor Zanzwa. I hey, feel for this guy. Fl he flashed away, but I think he's uh, <laughs> kind of screwed. Yep, flash coming in. They get the kill. Killing spree, nothing, nothing to. Nothing yeah, no to big deal right there. It's it's what we come to expect. You got the the duo rotate. They don't care about the ocean drakes. So they're just gonna send Toby and Panda up here into the top lane, and uh, it's a good decision by Aeon to rotate here, and actually might save them the turret. It's something that a lot of amateur scene players don't actually realize. Is once you lose that first turret, it's okay to leave your AD carry down here. That is, unless you just get solo killed by the poppy. I was about to say it is also putting. Poor, poor Zod by himself with Armia, and we have oh kind of seen how Armia tends to play. Cypher does some massive damage there with the Zillion Bombs, and he has basically no items. It's a it's a surprise to me that he's able to do that much, and really just landing them on this Arya swept that round. In. Oh. He flashed in onto Shadow and got killed, but the top lane, at least they got the kill onto Van Cleef. Yeah, good thing Cypher pressed that exhaust button and also used oh, his ultimate. No. <laughs> that's some that's some vengeance right there from Armia. Flash, hero charge, everything onto Shadow. This guy just wants to go back to base. Just let him, guys. Come on. He was just like, how dare you kill Cypher? I, I shall avenge him. My fallen brother here on the rift. Cypher didn't need to die. That's the that's the most tragic part. <laughs> that is the most tragic part. He got over overzealous and a little bit too greedy in that aspect, going way too ham. Yeah, now we actually have Zod and Aeon matching the 2v2 up in the top lane, and I am not even sure that I would have liked to see that out of them, because they're already losing this pretty, uh, pretty largely. Well, yeah, we get to see the lead that Panda and Toby have with just going all in and getting them so low so quickly. Yeah, I mean, I I would go for the tower trades if you can trust yourselves to do it. Here comes Zanzwa. Yeah, we heard the haunt being pumped. Santa will wants to get in on the Toby, gets the dredge line, but instantly polymorph. Auto attack! Cypher has the damage that he needs. The depth charge not going to pick up the kill onto Toby. Cypher able to zone away Zod and Ion. Yep, Zanzo just didn't combo the Nautilus properly right there. Could have autoed and then used the E to actually secure the kill onto Toby. More than likely right there, but because he doesn't pick up anything, Army has just been still pushing down here in the bottom lane, getting more and more pressure. Now Blaze here in the mid. 
Yeah, they got the stun up, the charm landing onto Blaze, but they don't care. They're wow. gonna dunk their way to a kill onto Poor Shadow. <laughs> no skill shots necessary right there from Blaze. He didn't even try to go for the, the flag and drag. It feels like the Lee Sin from last game. Now Van Cleef's gone. Yep, that's just Armia diving. Who ca You know, who cares? It's 12 minutes in the game. Armia just wants to die if he can, if he wants to. He has got the Sunfire Cape. Pretty damn strong, if I if I do say so myself. And Venerizer just dragging integrity from lane to lane to lane, and INT are just a little bit too late to respond every time. There's really not much they can do at this point. Get the They're tower. <laughs> too far behind. They let the minions. They they go for their swag minion kills, like we have known the Event Horizon squad to consistently do. And yeah, now, now finally they can go ahead and pick up the Drake. There's not much else left for them here on the map. And it is funny doing all of this with Panda split pushing in a side lane rather than your teleport user. But because they're so strong and because they know that Panda will be the source of all their damage later on in this one, they can just allow him to farm it up. He's got a 20 CS lead over Zod at the moment. Oh, Shadow, Shadow goes, goes in. in. They got the Chrono Shift on a Cypher, so he's going to be alive. Using that Keeper's Verdict to just hit out the Nami, not necessarily the person that Shadow gets hit into the wall by army of Cypher able to pick up a kill on the Shadow. In the back lane, we saw Blaze fighting with Van Cleef getting taken very low, but he actually lived the whole time. Cypher getting killed by Zanzawa in the return. Van Cleef now on the chase for Toby. Toby should be able to get himself to the tower, but the flash from Van Cleef and the poly polymorph, I mean the wild growth coming in, gonna save Toby for now. Right, still did get the Drake in the end. It's a one for one kill trade, one for one turret trade at the same time. And I think Integrity have to be happy with that, especially if they can get a little bit more. Yeah, they are going to try to see if they can kill and get the shutdown on to Armia. Able to do that, and they're looking for more. They're going to continue the push. Yeah, this is where it could get a little bit uh, sketchy for them with some, uh, you know, death timers, of course, ending on the side of Event Horizon. But. They gotta be really happy with that, ultimately, you know? They they do come behind a little bit if you uh, value the Drake more than the kill, but the Ocean Drake isn't gonna have a massive impact in this game because this match is much more about the team fights, about the small skirmishing rather than sieging or poking underneath the turrets. That's just what you get when you have uh, two or actually three incredibly low range marksmen, the three lowest range marksmen in the game, I actually uh, do believe with those three picks, but you know, Integrity just need to get some amount of gold back in their pockets so they can try and remain close in itemization. Yeah, the only marksman I think being lower is if you somehow consider Teemo marksman. But <laughs> you'd have I to think Teemo actually marksman. might have a longer range than, uh, than Lucian. Lucian? But, well, Shadow, he might die to red buff. Yep, yep. he dies to red buff. You got one shot. If you're wondering, it's not a tanky build coming out of the Jarvan, unless you consider Black Cleaver, which I guess gives you HP, effective. Where's yeah, the spell but... shield? <laughs> no spell shield coming in, but yeah, definitely going to be that more AD-centric build that we were curious to see how Blaze went. I think it had the potential to go for the tanky one if they were more even, but the fact that he's so far ahead... Uh, he's just like... Integrity need to realize that their side lanes are being crushed right now. It's it's a 1-3-1, one, one, but it's not a classic one by any means. You got an AD carry in the top lane, pulling in a uh, good old double lift on us right here. Where Armia, there's no one that can really kill him, and Integrity don't realize quick enough. Yeah. He's just going to be able to get so much damage on that bot lane tower. What was that? I think... 30% health remaining on that. Very low. All from just it's low. You can <laughs> tell just by the mini-map when it's when the turrets get dark. That means they're uh, going to go down to just like a wave of time on the tower. Exactly. And all Event Horizon are doing now is just trying to get control of that jungle. Just say, this is now ours. No longer yours. You're not allowed to have any pressure in this. And Panda in the top lane doesn't even care. <laughs> yeah, that would be a concern because there's potential for a 5 versus 4 right here. Now the charm did connect onto Blaze, but disengage coming, depth charge onto Blaze as Armia is just trying to zone away, get use that Keeper's Verdict, but the Chrono Shift going to keep Blaze alive for now. Armia taking really low, but he has the shields trying to keep himself alive. Blaze going to go down to Shadow. Kobe is going to be the next one focused down, taking so low the flash coming in, but with the bomb picks up a kill for Cypher onto Shadow in the top lane. The tower does fall to Panda, able to get himself something for the team across the well, map in... <clears throat> it's oh. it's still a one for, it's still a one for one and they got the tower that's a massive gain and they might even get Zanzo here. 
Yeah, Zantua a little bit too greedy with his recalls, but Cypher got taken very low. Van Cleef trying to see if he can get the kill on to Cypher. For a, that is going to be the Keeper's Verdict to knock away both Van Cleef and Zantua to keep Event Horizon alive. All the while, what a the joke. Tower is about to die. Panda, you know, we thought he was going to 1v9 in the team fights, and said he's just 1v9ing in a side lane the whole time. I, I want to see how much gold he has in his pocket. He's got almost 3,000 in the bank right now. That is massive, and I don't know. I feel like you just go for a, a full DPS build this game rather than, you know, the more uh, traditional Black Cleaver style we've been seeing a lot of. He, he opted for the Black Cleaver anyway. He might have also just had, like, the exact right amount of gold, too, to pick up that item. Rather than get all did, the components actually. of a Triforce, yeah. Yeah, looking at it, based off how much gold he no longer has and how much gold he currently has, <laughs> I'd, I'd assume that. I'd assume based off of mathematical skills and equations that that is what we can gather from the information. There you go. You're, 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 a, you're a math sort of guy <laughs> rather than an English sort of guy. I can... Actually, I don't really respect that because math is the bane of everyone's existence, I believe, but... What you gonna I'm do? I'm good at statistics. I'm that. I'm good at statistics. I'm good hey, at. Hey, Event Horizon are good at math too. They know that 13 is bigger than four. Yeah. Also, that 32 is bigger than 25. And the five is bigger than one. Oh wow! They are just all across the board. They they are showing that they are ma they're math people. They know their math. Keeping this advantage heavily now. Army is able to split up in a side lane, and they actually are grouped up as four in that mid lane for the side of Event Horizon, which means that. Those really close team fights that were kind of helping out the side of integrity are no longer going to be the case. Yeah, well, they, they weren't even really helping integrity all that much. It was keeping it even, but they were losing turrets and objectives at the same exact time. So even though the kills were close, still the overall gold value being in favor of Event Horizon. And remember that they got that bot tower very low. Remember the dragon's coming up. Yeah, dragon's coming up, but that's the engage. They have the dunk. They got the chrono shift on the blades to keep them alive. I'm going to connect on the Armia, but he's tanky enough. They don't care. They get the kill. The Rampage for Panda. Cypher's going to be able to get Van Cleef with the bomb in the back line. As Zenzawa, he wanted to join in the fight, but not going to be able to. Slowed down by the Glitter Alliance. They're trying to lock him down with the bombs over and over again, getting the damage. Here comes the Depth Charge onto Cypher. Wild Growth used oh, onto Armia. Oh, no. He's just taking the tower forever and more. The bomb will pick up the kill onto Zenzawa. This just is absolutely tragic. Event Horizon, no one will ever die on this lineup here with the Lulu, with the Zillion. It's gross, and once again, it's everyone down here in the bottom lane while Panda goes one on one, or one on none, actually, in the mid. Yeah, there's no one that can stop Panda. There's no one that can stop the Cypher-Blaze combo. This is pretty much just looking like how we thought it would after game one. You know, again, the Rift Herald getting no love because Event Horizon just so focused on this bottom lane. Apparently, they don't even care about the the lonely little lonely, lonely little scuttler in the in the jungle. I think even a Moomoo might have more friends than the Rift Herald after this patch. Well, actually, wouldn't you consider that they are his friend because they don't want to hurt him? They want to leave him alone. They want to make sure that he's able to return to the void in peace and not have to suffer. I'd rather, like, at least come say hi, come drop a ward, tell, like, so that, that you know. True. That is true. Yeah. They could they could have done that. At the very least, they could put a ward there to say, hey, we, we recognize your existence, we love you, but we don't want to hurt you. Yeah. Feels yeah, bad, guys, man. anyone in your show look your games, make sure to drop a ward down for the Rift Herald. Just go dance him. in front of him for a little while. Give him, yeah. give him some, you know, bright moments in his life. Put a smile on that purple face. That purple face with an eye on the back that is weird looking and awkward. Anyways, He's League of Legends. <laughs> League of Legends. We look at what happens now. Shadow. He just got obliterated. Casual. Casual. And now we see the rest of Integrity getting engaged on by Event Horizon. Not even caring. Blaze was really far in. Sensual going to be dropped by Panda. Here comes the calling on to. Aeon and onto Zod. Zod getting himself out of there, but double kill picked up by Panda. The Flash coming in. They're going to get the kill on the Zod. Instead, it's going to be Van Cleef slowed down by the red buff with Panda getting the triple on the Zod. Shadow leaves the game. I don't even think that he could even save this base. That's the forfeit. That's a surrender. That's a surrender. Wow. That's one way to do it right there. Ben Horizon, they're going to the winner's finals, baby. And that should not be a surprise to anyone, just looking at what is 
going through with this Event Horizon squad. They are absolutely decimating anybody they go against. They can put pick weird picks like the Zillion, like the J4, and just completely destroy anyone that even tries to fight them. Yeah, and it is... It is going to be a monumental task for any team in this tournament. We thought Integrity might have been the guys to do it. They they had the you know the strong roster coming into this. They had potential, but it just didn't end up happening. Event Horizon just so clutch in the early to mid game that you never reach that later point where the composition may have actually struggled and force a surrender vote out of a team that looked so incredibly good in the group stages. Yeah, the only team now that we possibly could see put up a good fight is going to be the squad of Hayes, who do still have to play Divinity. They still have to make it to the winner's finals later on, but we'll find out if they are able to make that. But right now, we are going to get ready for our next matchup that is going to be between, I believe, the Gamers with Attitude and TTN. So you guys stick around.